Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Gladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the tangle Liberty Fan from CZT Connie Green. So at the time of this recording, it is Independence Day here in the United States. And I thought, well, I'm going to look for something that is uh, kind of apropos. And I found this. And it's a fantastic tangle and can be used any time of year. It's really, really neat. All right, so it starts off with uh, some orbs. A little bit different style of an orb grid. And actually, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna start, I'm gonna put two here in the center, just because. So it's kind of a rectangular grid of orbs. And I would start off with this and I'm just going to do I don't know there's not even a, a square that I could call this maybe a two square but when you have have a set of have a grid of orbs and then and actually I'm looking at one two three four you know it's really they're kind of just offset but it does look like it's going to fit best if it's rectangular if it's square you could always try it right um, but then so here here's four and I'm going to put an orb in the center and then here's, you know, the next, well, the, this shares, right? And then we're going to put an orb in the center here. So kind of offset if you were to do this on a larger scale. On Connie's step out, uh, and a link to that is in the description section. Uh, she she put a, a dotted line here. I, I kind of left it out because I, I think we can get it. At first I was trying to figure out why she had the dotted line. And um, and then I thought, oh, I see. Um it just, it's just kind of denoting, you know, we're going to focus in on this. And actually, I might, I might add it back into mine um, because it does make, it does make some sense. Um, you know, sometimes, sometimes we, meaning me, <laughs> look too fast and just kind of like, oh, scan. Oh, well, that doesn't make sense. Oh, oh, and then afterwards go, oh, oh I understand now. So we're focusing in on these four, well, five. <laughs> it's like, it's almost like an elongated five die. All right. Then we're going to do some diagonal double lines and she has them curvy. So I would make them curvy. And what's brilliant about that is for those that uh, worry about not being able to make straight lines, this is a great tangle for that. So I'm just kind of making a, an S shape. And then here, because here's our, our second set, I'm going to do then this here too. And I would, Keep them kind of close together, but at the same time, don't worry about anything. Then we're going to go diagonal the other way. Ugh. Can I turn that so that way it... There. I, I think I have to use my pinky to turn it, and I didn't before. All right, so going diagonal the other way. And you know, in some of mine, well, like I just did here, we just don't worry about it. If, if they end up like together like that, it's all okay. And I love that about this tangle. And I think I might have to try it more in a square grid because I'm, I, I, I've, I'm, I'm curious. I, I didn't play with it uh, a lot, you know, just because. And then I'm like, oh, you know. No, you know, and I think it would still, it'll still come out okay. You might just, it might just be a spacing issue. Um, and that might be it, as, as you will see in the next couple steps. All right, so once you have the X's, and, you know, and I, if you end up uh, making this on a larger grid, of course, you know, these are going to be shared with the next, you know, the next group, just like we did here. All right, then we're going to put some going up these, oh, we'll call them columns. Same thing, we just do them curvy. One thing uh, that I was noting to myself is like, and especially like right here where it's like, if you start it maybe too low or it on the other side. So always know that, that you have that kind of safety net there. Or just don't worry about it and wherever the one was here, you know, just, you know, run them together. It makes it kind of look like a ribbon. It's kind of neat. So then we're, we're going, um, well, whichever way you're looking at it, rows or columns. Uh, 
Okay, and that is our framework. Then we're going to start in the center, just like she, uh, uh, um, Connie has done on her step out. And we're going to make two more sets of, of double lines. And so starting on this orb, and we're going to focus in on these two. And I'm still making them kind of S-shaped. You, I mean, if you want to just bend them like this, you can. And I have them kind of touching the orb, but it depends on how much room. And you make that uh, choice. I should have had it. Well, no, it's all right. If I had this one curving, it would look more like a fan. <laughs> okay. Let's try it on this one. Although I should make it, I should make them evenly uh, or equally. So that way, you know, it's all all right. So, and then we have created, well, it, 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 you could think of it as two fans, but we have this one fan because we have the one coming up the center. So now on the sides, we're going to come from uh, the, uh, the bottom orbs and go up to the top. So this will be the, like this top here will be this, this these will become the top of that fan. to yeah there we go and you know same thing this one is neat because it, it's kind of like the centerpiece and um, and you can have you know kind of extra fun with that I kind of like making them making them s shapes I think they kind of they look neat that way And then we're going to do the bottom, and we're going to come from the bottom. Now, I'm also going to dare say you could probably have some fun with this if you wanted to and have them go different directions. If you wanted to. It might, well, I don't know. Play with it. I'm trying to picture it in my head. It, you know, it that it, I'm thinking, well, it might look a little too chaotic, but that's okay, <laughs> right? And then, so, and this is it. That is the tangle. So then you can play with it as you wish. I'm going to, I do like on uh, Connie's sample that uh, she filled in the orb. So I'm going to do that, leaving a little leaving a little orb there. So I, I pre-do the orb if you've never seen me do this before. I've, I've been doing this kind of con, kind of consistently because I like it. But a little sir, a little a little orb inside that makes your shine. So that way we can make a shine without having to use a white jelly roll. Or if you choose to use the white jelly roll, then it's also then not competing. You can still put it over it and have the, the brilliant white that comes from that, but then it's not competing with the black ink. So sometimes it's just a little nicer. And if, if your orbs are large enough, I've, I've done this on just a couple. You could leave this one, there's no way. Um, but I've left like a, um, a little sliver on the opposite side. Because sometimes it's nice, you know, one little shine spot is nice, but sometimes it's nice to have, have two. Or I guess you could really, it's really probably more of a reflection point if we're thinking of it as, um, you know, it's it, it's shining off of something. So, okay, all right. All right, now, shading. Let's do, I'm just going to have them, have the shading, and yeah, I'm going to have it emanate from the or because that's where everything converges and if you are new to tangling or um, you, you find that uh, shading is a is a struggle that is a great place to start where things converge you know, start there now one thing to be careful of is here where they converge here but we have these these lines so be careful not to put graphite on the outside I kind of did there and we're just going to bring it out a little bit. Now, if you, because I didn't think about it till now, but we'll, we'll see. No, it's still going to look neat. Um, you 
could coordinate this with your curve. So that way your curve kind of goes uh, along with, um, like right after where you might have the graphite. But that, you know what, that, that's planning and, and Zentangle, we, we don't worry about planning things. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, more uh, spontaneous, just do. But actually, you know, what's, what's fun is some of the curves kind of line up with where I have the, the shading naturally, you know, like here. So it just, it accentuates the, the motion of the graphite. And then too, you can put, you know, as little or as much as you want on there um, and have fun with it. So, yeah, and I, yeah, like I said, I wouldn't, don't worry about any of those points, just where, just where the lines are converging and then work to not go on the outside of those little sections. Really cool tangle. I see lots of, uh, lots of fun with this and um, just really, really neat. So if you enjoyed it, would love to have a thumbs up or a like, uh, feel free to share it. And if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, would love to have you uh, be a subscriber, um, leaving comments, all of that stuff help. All of that stuff helps me out um, with algorithms and all of that stuff. In the description section, you will also, besides links to the step outs, you will find ways to connect with me if you so wish. I do classes uh, almost twice weekly. A lot are free, some are paid, so that way that can afford me to do more of the free stuff. So if you, um, you know, take a look at the website, I do have them, I do have most everything listed there. If you have any questions, of course, there's ways to connect with me through the website or, you know, like I said, in the comments. Would love to tangle with you live. That would be so much fun. And until then, thanks so much for watching. And I wish you happy tangling. And happy fourth.